everybody how are you doing i am shitanshu from dream abroad and today i've got ashwin here with me he is a student while he's a permanent resident of canada as well so welcome ashwin thanks for having me here shitanshu so this is a very interesting story how i met ashwin it was just a couple of weeks back i was actually you know going uh, coming home from walmart and right in the middle of street when i was actually crossing the street he actually shouted my name i was like uh, do i know you and then he was like no probably i know you through your videos so this was quite strange for me that uh, the reach of my videos is actually getting a uh, lot better and actually people are actually watching it the real people who are living in canada do actually watch it i used to think that most of the people most of my viewers uh, in india in asia and all of the world they would do watch it but yes it's good that people in canada also watch it So Ashwin can you please introduce yourself and tell about and short your story what's your story all about Oh hi Sitanshu uh, my name is Ashwin Annamale and I'm from Tamil Nadu India and I'm a new Canadian permanent resident and at the same time I'm a student too I study at the University of Waterloo uh, I study Master of Mathematics in Computer Science so I study computer science Okay so you told me about a very interesting story how you got your PR and then you were ready to travel on a student visa you actually traveled in a student visa yes. right so what was this story i'm sure pretty it's pretty interesting i was always fascinated by the west and canada is obviously one of the easiest countries to immigrate to today so i applied for both my permanent residence and to uh, canadian universities at the same time and i applied for my study permit and my pr at the same time Two days before I was scheduled to leave on a study permit to Canada, I got my passport request, my final passport request back in India. So I came in through a study permit, and then I had to send my passports over to Ottawa, and I had to get my permanent residence here after so, I landed here. So I landed so here on an international permit, on student, student permit, permit yeah. right? And then after that, you got your uh, PR, like yeah, you got yeah. it, you got your P. Uh, passport your request passport request uh, like uh, two days before but yeah. you actually got it stamped and uh, you got a copr basically after coming over here yeah that's right i got my confirmation of permanent okay residence. so uh, since you are a permanent resident now do you actually pay less of fee in compared to what international students actually pay absolutely absolutely i pay almost a third of what international students pay so if you are a permanent resident you are considered a domestic student and you pay the same fees as canadian citizens would pay so that's a really good thing for me um, so you can look it up on the university of waterloo's website for my program it's around 2500 dollars for uh, domestic students that is prs and citizens and for international students it's close to uh, 7000 7500 it's around that mark so it's considerably cheaper considerably yeah. cheaper right and is it for uh, all the universities most of the universities or yeah uh, all universities in ontario have differential fee for international students and domestic students and domestic students pay considerably lower fees than uh, international students and i also know about universities in quebec they have a three tier system mcgill university for instance has a three tier system quebec residents pay much much lesser fees and then you have the rest of canada rest of Ca- canada oh. canadian students they pay a little bit more than uh, quebec students and then international students they pay the most okay so uh, so many people asking this question that uh, if we are permanent residents do we actually get to pay less of fee so the answer is yes uh, it's considerably low i'll try to put on the screenshots here as well and then okay uh, moving on Oh I also have something to add to it yeah. so I know uh, a friend in university so she's studying her undergrad in computer science and she's in her third year right now what happened was her parents got a permanent residence so that her fees would get lowered that was oh. one of the major reasons because undergrad is much more expensive than postgraduate studies here mm. so it made financial sense for her parents to get a permanent residence here Okay so that's that's really nice so you got your answer uh, you will definitely pay a lot less if you're a permanent resident than if you're an international student okay so uh, you told us that uh, there's obviously this financial advantage apart from the financial advantage is there any other advantage as well of being a permanent resident and then studying over uh, being over you know the study permit oh of course uh, being a permanent resident is much more advantageous than being on a study permit uh, for instance let's say a person on a study permit wants to go on an internship they have to get what's called a co-op work permit and again you have to go to IRCC uh, submit a 
bunch of paperwork, wait for them to respond, and it takes months on end together, and you can just work for let's say four months. That's it. But then if you are a permanent resident, you need not do any of this paperwork. You can just take an off term. You're free to work wherever you want inside of Canada. So that's a big advantage again. And to add further to it, once you are a permanent resident, they should give you the first priority by law. Okay. Because there's this labor market impact assessment things mm-hmm. that are going on. So by law, they are required. Employers here are required to give you first priority compared to non-permanent residents. Okay. So obviously, it is uh, really helpful. if you are a permanent resident and then you are studying okay so moving on to the other parts uh, can you tell us about your pr story like uh, did you apply your the pr to your own what was the timeline and all oh i did apply pr on my own one of my friends karthik he is in vancouver right now uh, he was the one that first told me about the canadian permanent residents process and he encouraged me to apply on my own i was under a dilemma on whether to go through a consultancy or whether i could do it on my own but karthik encouraged me to do it on my own and uh, right after i submitted my application for my pr shitanshu started releasing all his uh, videos on dream abroad he distilled all the information and it was there in one source but i had to do a lot of reading on a lot of forums talk to a lot of people So if you are in the process of applying for permanent residence take a look at all his previous videos he has answered all the questions that might arise during the process follow his advice <laughs> and subscribe to his channel <laughs> yes and subscribe to my channel that's the most important part he's saving you a lot of time and money <laughs> right so <laughs> moving on to the next question okay so uh, how much time did the entire process took so what is the timeline okay i thought about moving to canada in january 2018 In February 2018, I wrote my IELTS, and uh, did you crack it in first go? Like oh, yes. CLB nine? Uh, I got a CLB ten. Oh, is it? Yeah, without a CLB ten, I wouldn't be sitting here. You so need a CLB. If you are a person with just a bachelor's degree, without a CLB ten, getting into Canada is going to be very hard for you. So he is somebody who's got CLB ten in one go. I am somebody who got his CLB nine in two times, two attempts. So don't get discouraged. Anyway, you're gonna come back, come here to Canada, and you're gonna be successful. Don't worry. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> tell me about the rest of the story, the timeline actually. Uh, so on by mid March, I had submitted all my applications, and I was in the pool. I had a CR score of four hundred and forty one. and then it was a two month long painful wait for me to get picked by the express entry draw so finally uh, on the 23rd of may i got my invitation to apply that was one of the happiest days of my life i was elated i was in cloud 9 uh, but then that's uh, that's when i realized the real journey began i thought uh, everything from now on would be so easy but then the hardest part is yet to come because you have to wait for a long time I got my paperwork done in around 15 days, and on the 9th of June, I got my application in with all the proofs, all the documents. I had submitted to the IRCC, and I had to wait for six excruciating months with no updates at all. I was anxious every single day, and then at one point, uh, I just gave up hopes, and I was like, "Okay." it will take its own course and i concentrated on my uh, study permit university applications and i got my study permit in a week week in so a week yeah that was fast right yeah okay so uh, you told me that you were self employed in india right yeah i worked for one and a half years at a company and then i had my own startup in madurai in madurai yeah so uh, you, like you furnish some proofs of your self employment Yeah, uh, furnishing proofs when you are employed is really easy. You just give them your uh, pay stubs and uh, your bank account statement, Obviously. your offer letter, your leaving letter. So proving employment at a company it's it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's exactly. so easy. But then proving self-employment is a tricky part. Uh, I had to produce a lot of documentation. For example, I had to give my articles of incorporation, my invoices, reference letters from my clients. So one advice for people that are planning on doing a startup, please register your company as soon as possible. Don't delay on doing it. It's going to cost you really less, but it will be really helpful in proving that you actually ran the company. So don't delay on it. So I had to do some extra paperwork because I was self-employed. Okay. Cool. So moving on to the next question. So I've got my questions in my mobile. I just hope nobody minds it. Uh, so studying in Canada is it like really hard or uh, like 
do you have to go through some rigorous uh, courses do you get time to travel in canada like how's it uh, there is no one size fits all answer for that sitanshu uh, it all depends on the university which you are in the courses which you take and it all depends on whether you are a fast learner whether you are a slow learner whether you are a hard worker whether you are a smart worker or whether you are a lazy person so there's no one size fits all answer but yes i've been having fun here but i've also been working hard as well because of uh, my university okay so uh, do you work part time as well uh, i work for a tiny bit uh, at a programming school called crania they teach kids how to code it's an after school program uh, since i'm a programmer myself i teach kids how to code okay so uh, you do work part time have you got friends who actually work part time like for 20 hours a week or oh international students are legally allowed to work only for 20 hours a week and exactly. there are friends that work 20 hours a week and then there are uh, domestic students that work part time as well so uh, how's their schedule like is it like too tough because i know many of my subscribers and viewers they actually you know nobody has got a huge amount of money in their bank account most of us you know want to come to canada study over here and then do a part time work and then after that uh, keep studying at the same time as well yeah. so how hard is it to study and to work at the same time uh, in in a week do you we know, get do we do they get time to study do they get time to enjoy the time like is it possible oh it will be a it will be a tight rope walk kind of situation so it is going to be a little bit hard but instead of people trying to max out on their 20 hours what i would suggest is if you are from a field like computer science there's a lot of demand here you can get a part time job that pays you more than minimum wage maybe even double the minimum wage so that would be a smart thing to do you should try to increase the uh, money that you earn per hour rather than try to increase your hours in an illegal way obviously so there was an incident which i actually made a video about so uh, a gentleman an indian punjabi gentleman he actually was uh, driving a truck and then he was pulled over by a policeman and uh, he was you know probably behind the bars or something because of that uh, rule that he broke so obviously this is uh, considered as a crime here so please don't do it All right so uh, when it comes to choosing the college or the university where you want to go so would you recommend uh, choosing ontario or going to other provinces uh, let's say quebec or So oh, I love Ontario. Ontario is one of the best provinces in Canada, especially it has it is. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing place and it has a lot of universities and colleges. So I would recommend you to go to Ontario. There are other universities and colleges in places like BC, uh, Alberta, but then uh, Quebec it's a majorly French speaking province. Uh, so the immigration rules are also different in Quebec. So if you're thinking about uh, going into a university in Quebec, the express entry process will not be applicable to you and you have to go through additional paperwork so please have that in mind before going to a university in quebec if you go to a university in ontario you apply for express entry and you get your pr through that process but the process is totally hectic. different for quebec in it's quebec. Uh, you have to get a csq you have to uh, make a profile in the arima portal not in the express entry portal so it's a totally different thing uh, you know getting a pr through uh, quebec quebec being a quebec resident or if you want to yeah. uh, immigrate to quebec okay so i guess uh, that is it i won't elongate this video too much uh, thank you so much ashwin for your time uh, it was really good on his part that i called him today and just to ask if he actually agrees for an interview not everyone is comfortable in front of this camera it's really tough i i know how tough it is because you know i ask people many people that you know they tell me their amazing stories and i'm like dude can you tell this to my viewers in front of the camera but they are like no i'm not comfortable in front of the camera so it's really uh, i'm really thankful to you that you oh, actually you. agreed to do this thank you i'm sure it will be uh, helpful for uh, most of our viewers out there as well so thank you ashwin thank you for having me here thank you and click the bell icon and the subscribe button do thank not you. forget to do that <laughs> thank you so much thank you